Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Chopped Greek Chicken Sandwich. That's right, I got this idea from my friend Mykonos, who works in the office, and he couldn't decide between a chicken sandwich and a Greek salad, so he came up with this, and it really is amazing. And to get started, what we'll do is take a sandwich roll, and we'll slice it open and pull out a little bit of the inside just to make more room for our filling. And two big tips here. When you cut in, only go like three quarters of the way. And that is so our roll stays together, which is kind of a key for a chopped sandwich. Plus a roll with pointy ends always stays together better than a roll with square ends. So if you have an option, something shaped like this would be ideal. And then once our roll's prepped, we can start on the filling, which is gonna begin with some rotisserie chicken or some leftover roast chicken from another meal. Or of course you can make some Greek chicken from scratch and then use the leftovers for this. And if you're lucky, and I am, the store in town that sells the best rotisserie chicken will offer both a plain version and then a garlic, herb, and lemon one, which is what I got for this. And that'll give us a little bit of a head start with the flavor profile. But the point is we're gonna need some cooked chicken. And what we'll do is pull off the amount we think we need for one sandwich. And then we will top that with our other ingredients, which for me is gonna be your classic array of things that would go in a Greek salad. And I'm gonna start by thinly slicing some green pepper and just some bell peppers fine. But I had this beautiful Anaheim chili, so I decided to use that. And yes, we'll definitely wanna remove the seeds, but you would have done that anyway. Just like I didn't have to tell you not to leave the bones in the chicken. But anyway, we'll slice off as much as we want in one sandwich and then do the exact same thing with some tomatoes. And if it's the middle of summer, use an actual nice vine ripened tomato. Otherwise, these little grape tomatoes are fairly sweet and make a nice choice. And then I definitely think we should include some cucumber, not just for that juicy crunch, but also to add a little bit of bitterness, which along with the bittersweetness from the peppers is gonna help elevate all the other flavors in this. And then after the cucumber, we will have some pitted olives. And yes, I did buy a nice jar of actual Greek olives, which included Kalamata and a couple other ones I can't pronounce. But really, anything's gonna work, and you should probably check the back of your fridge before you buy something. I mean, you are after all the Michael Scott of using what you got. And by the way, is anyone else shocked by how many olive choices there are at this door? I mean, it seems a little bit suspicious. Anyway, if you have a theory, let me know. And then what we'll do is finish up with a few slices of red onion, which like everything else, we will pile semi-neatly on top. Okay, by pre-slicing things and arranging them like this, when we move on to the chopping step, everything's gonna go a lot better. But before we do that, let's go ahead and season this up with some salt, along with a nice pinch of freshly ground black pepper, a few optional, but also mandatory shakes of cayenne, and then a very generous pinch of dried Greek oregano, also known as dried oregano. And sure, if you want, you can use the fresh, but I think the dried's better here. It makes this taste more Greek chickenish. And that's it, at this point we can take a cleaver or our biggest, most impressive knife and we'll start giving this the old choppa choppa. And we will keep chopping until it's as chopped as we want it. Which for me is gonna be fairly small, but of course you're the one that has to eat this. So if you want yours chunkier, don't cut it so much. And I should mention, this is just the first of three chops. Okay, I like to give everything an initial chop until it looks a little something like this. And then we'll stop and add some nice hearts of romaine. And we'll go ahead and give this a second chopping to integrate that. All right, I just feel like that gives us a little more control regarding how small we chop the romaine, since I don't want those pieces completely pulverized. Oh, and by the way, one of the advantages of using a cleaver, which every kitchen should have, is that it also acts like a spatula, and it makes it easier to move things around the cutting board. And as you'll see, comes in really handy when we stuff our roll. But anyway, after we've chopped in a little bit of lettuce, we will stop and we will add our final set of ingredients, including some beautiful Greek feta cheese, which we will crumble over. And then we'll follow that up with what's basically gonna be the dressing. And that's gonna be nothing more than some freshly squeezed lemon juice. And for this amount, which is one sandwich, I think half a lemon's perfect. And then we'll finish up with a very, very generous drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. And yes, extra credit if it's Greek. And if it's not, nobody will know. All right, not even Mykonos would be able to tell. And that's it, we'll take our cleaver or knife and give this one last brief chopping, 
which really is more of a mixing, since everything's pretty much cut as small as I want it. But we do want to make sure our cheese, lemon juice, and oil are mixed evenly in. And by the way, for something creamier, richer, and a little more decadent, you could, if you want, add some mayo, which is usually the glue that holds chopped sandwich fillings together. But as much as I like mayo, I stuck with the more classic Greek salad approach. And once everything's been mixed, we can use our cleaver or knife to pack our sandwich. And I know it looks like a lot, but I pretty much got it all in. Which is one of the main advantages of the chopped sandwich. Okay, besides being fun to make, and even more fun to eat, the smaller you chop things, the less room they take up, which means we can stuff more in. Plus, we've created a ton of surface area. And as I've said many times before, surface area equals flavor. And that's it. After stuffing that as much as humanly possible, I transfer that next to my favorite sandwich side which is of course potato chips. Okay, a lot of times I just make a sandwich so I can eat chips. But anyway, I grabbed a hold and went in for the official taste. And that, my friends, if you like chicken salad sandwiches or Greek salads or any kind of chopped salad or any kind of Greek chicken anything, you are going to absolutely love this. Oh, and speaking of salad, I grabbed a fork here so I could pack things back in when needed. And besides all those other advantages I already listed, it is very nice getting every single ingredient in one bite. So we also got that going for us, which is nice. And while I really did love this, and I hope you make one for yourself, the method we just shared will work no matter what meat, vegetable, or dressings you decide to use. Okay, I was just about to start listing other things you could do this with, but I'm not going to, because I'd pretty much just have to list everything. Oh, and if you're making more than one or two, and you want to do this ahead, I would do everything up to that first chopping and then stop there. And then right before you're ready to serve, I would add in the lettuce and the cheese and whatever dressing ingredients you're going to use. Okay, once our filling's mixed up, and by mixed up I mean chopped up, we pretty much want to serve and eat right away. Oh, and for my friends in Pittsburgh, if you wanted, you could make some Greek-style potatoes and put those in the sandwich. Okay, if you're not from there, people from Pittsburgh like to serve their sandwiches with french fries on it. I know it is weird, but they have their reasons. But anyway, that's it. My take on a chopped Greek chicken sandwich. I'm going to go ahead and finish this off. And what I hope you do is find some nice pointy rolls and then all or some of these ingredients and give this amazing sandwich a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.